us up, it's Nurse Howie. I went to the same ICU that interviewed me prior to when I got my RN license and I interviewed with them again. They asked me to come back. And so I did. And today I just got the call that I still didn't get the job. Ah! Hey, what can I say? Competition in California is tough. And when I got that phone call, I was screaming inside my head for the rest of the day. And um, I think I really had my hopes set on it, especially since it was the only interview that I had scheduled for this month. And so I kept thinking about more and more things about what my life would be and how my career would change if I just could only get this job. If this one could just, if I could just land this one job, I'll be able to have enough time to prove to them how much of a good nurse I am and how much I care and how much I can contribute to the unit because this is me, you know? But that's not what the managers see. What the managers want to know is that if you're going to be the best competition and the best person to provide enough care for their unit. It's not about me. Um, so I can blame the fact that California um, nursing positions are really in high demand. Um, it pays the best, one of the best rates in the United States for a reason. But if I'm not ready for that interview, then I have no one to blame but myself. So when the nurse manager finally called me, um, about a week after I had interviewed for the same position that I had interviewed for like three months ago. Um, she said that they had given the position to um, other people or to somebody else. And I uh, asked him, I said, I understand and I'm sorry, but um, I was wondering if you had any feedback for me. And basically she said that my portfolio was good. I had a good pedigree. I had some good backing. Um, my reference letters were fantastic and I had a good sense of presence, you know, I was very, I had a good hygiene and I, and I talked uh, in a clear manner. However, what she had a problem with was that she suggested that maybe next time that if I'm interviewed and I'm asked a question, whether it be a scenario question or a problem question or just a personality question based on the resume, that I just answer concisely. Um, Apparently it was a 30 minute interview, the same interview as last time, and uh, there was about half the panel there was the same people that had interviewed me before. And they seemed like they were nice, and they seemed like they liked me, so I had a decent feeling. However, one of the questions was a scenario question that they gave me, and it was very simple. It was just, what would you do if a patient had hypotension? And I wish that I had answered in a much better way. All, basically I just said that I would just check to make sure and assess the patient, make sure the patient's okay and responding to me well, and that you know I would check and assist, uh, assess the patient and prepare for possibly a passively, passive leg raise test, bring in my colloids and um, um, uh, normal saline and you know crystalloids and um, get ready to follow the doctor's orders and to assess the labs and always keep monitoring my patient's hemodynamics, whether it be CVP, the MAP, or any other things that'll show me whether this patient is going to be crashing or if it's a new health status. Anyway, she wanted a more concise answer and my answers were like what I just said. You know, it just kind of goes around and around and around. So I'm assuming that each candidate is asked the same types of 10 questions. They may vary a little bit, but they're all asked, we're all asked 10 questions and I just didn't give the right answer. And I'm a little bit sad that they kind of base a lot of their points based on how I answer those questions. Maybe it was just one or two questions that I didn't answer ideally. But it tells me also that number one, I'm not prepared. I'm still not prepared. And number two, my competition is tough. If they're able to answer all of those questions in a succinct, precise way, then I have to be able to do that too. My portfolio may be good and I have great letters of recommendation as well as experience as an externship in the ICU, but I guess all my other comp competitors have the same thing and they just edged me out twice. So I'm going to have to change my game plan. Um, it's been about a couple days, I did some grieving, um, <laughs> I just played video games for a day, 
Um, but now it's time for me to pick myself up. Um, I have been looking for more opportunities uh, to be able to apply to the critical care. And I've thought about it. While I was grieving, I thought about it that I do still want to work at critical care. This is the area where I want to be. And this is the area where I was trained. And I know that's a little bit stubborn. But it's what I want. So, however, I need to be more realistic. I'm not getting the premium ICU positions at the top magnet academic hospitals um, here where I live. I mean, they've all interviewed me and I've gotten so close to getting that position, but I keep getting edged out. So, my next step is to look at step down ICUs, coronary catheter unit, uh, coronary care units, um, intermediate ICU care, and then maybe work my way up. Um, I hate to think that maybe it'll take me about a couple of years. That's a huge decision, but it's what I have to do. Another thing that I need to do is that I have also applied further away than my own um, comfortable com um, uh, commute distance. You know, so I might have to apply to an the next city over, which was probably going to take a couple hours. Now, of course, it's within reason. I have friends or family, and I've staked out the rent around where those hospitals are that I'm applying to and I would kind of figure out exactly how much money it would cost for me to rent a room there for like about maybe two or three nights a week while I finish up my shifts and then spend the rest of the time at home and then I also have to figure out how I'm gonna get to school in between those days so um, what's weird is that there's a couple of positions up in Northern California, like in Palo Alto, and they give nurses a huge salary, about 40 grand more than what most nurses are used to here in California. In fact, a lot of the nurses over there are given a six-figure income. And so, I could think about maybe flying over there one, you know, once or twice a week, or once a week, do my shifts all in a row, and then come back home. Um, however, I did do the research and it shows that the rent over there is even higher. So that's why the cost of, and that's why you're getting paid so much because the cost of living is so high. Um, plus, what really hurts me is that even though I'm a single man with no dependents, um, I will probably have to give up a lot of my uh, social interaction. I'll miss my friends again and my family, and I also won't be able to work out as much. So. You know, I need to keep up my fitness. <laughs> I, mean, I need to work out, otherwise I get into uh, a depressive state. You know, my mood gets worse and I don't know if I can handle that again because if my mood gets worse, then my schooling gets worse. So anyway, I just thought I'd vent. Um, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, I didn't make the ICU. It sucks that I got rejected twice. Rejection is never easy, but you know, that's the life of a nurse. Um, I have that grit. I have to keep trying. Um, I have to do it on my own pace, but I'm not going to just keep bullheading my way in there. I'm going to think about what I'm doing wrong, and I'm going to actively try to change that. Apparently, I didn't change it enough. And so they rejected me, and um, you know, that's on my responsibility. There's some mitigating factors that weren't my fault, but for the most part, the things that I could have done to edge me closer to getting that position. I could have done better. For example, I could have had my um, portfolio done ahead of time instead of trying to do it the day before. Um, I could have had my suit dry pressed days before the interview. And I know that I was going through school and I, was, I had a term paper due, but that's not an excuse. I need to be ready next time I interview. My answers have to be concise and I have to answer them at the exact amount of time. So I need to practice with my friends um, to make sure that I'm doing it right. <sighs> that feels good. It feels good coming out. Anyway, thanks for following up. Um, I'm the best, you know, the good thing about this rejection is that I have a lot more ideas for the next videos. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do a lot more fast critical care and even um, basic med surge nursing um, because I need to be able to not just know the theories of the all the fancy like intra-aortic balloon pumps and CRRTs and all that stuff, but I also need to know how to do and explain how I'm going to give nursing care 
um, even on just the basic level because I need to know my basics. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Um, let me know your thoughts down below and um, keep up with me and let me know how you guys are doing, if you guys are having any trouble uh, finding a job as well. And um, peace out. Be good nurses. Be good people. Bye.